Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the webinar about uh, VR environments in corporation and vocational training. My name is Jussi Kajala. I'm the CEO of 3D Bear, and we are really happy to be here with great panelists and speakers today in an event hosted by uh, Times Group of India. Um, today, we will talk about virtual learning environments in corporate and vocational training and present many case examples of how different organizations have harnessed these metaverse environments for the benefit of better training and more effective education. Um, I will first show the agenda of the event, just to recap of what's gonna happen today. And then we will uh, proceed in um, introductions of each um, panelist. So, here's the agenda for today. Um, first, we will have a welcome note from uh, Dr. Mika Tironen, who's a Councillor of Education and Science in the Embassy of Finland in New Delhi to kick off this event. After that, we will discuss um, metaverse technologies for corporate and vocational training overall with case examples provided by the different panelists. We'll hear examples in healthcare by uh, Ms. Laura Lakkonen and Mr. Jukka Koivisto in Diakonia College of Finland. Um, this is Kirsi Tynela and Mr. Janne Hietonummi in Valkeakoski Vocational College. We'll talk about displaying products and services with the metaverse technologies. And then uh, Rita Malmberg from Kareria will uh, describe the benefits of VR in learning process industry. And we will finish off with panel discussion between the participants uh, regarding the topic of uh, vocational corporate training, metaverse environments concerning benefits and lessons learned. So that is the agenda of today. I welcome you and uh, let's have a brief word of if each panelist in the beginning. Maybe you can just say hi and very brief introduction before I uh, pass the word to Dr. Mika Tirunen, who can be last in this short introduction round and then proceed with his welcome now. So um, I'll start from the end. Uh, Rita, can you say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Yes. It's a Friday evening in India, Friday afternoon in Finland. So um, we appreciate everybody's dedication of this uh, special webinar tonight. Um, Kirsi and Janne. Hello, everybody. Hello, nice to be here. Laura and Jukka. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Nice to be here. So here are our panelists. You will hear more of uh, them later. And please, um, if you want, you can uh, send comments, questions, and um, we are happy to kind of uh, discuss um, different items involved uh, all the time as we go into the webinar. But with that, I'll give the uh, floor to Dr. Mika Tirunen to open this event. And thank you uh, for being here from Embassy of Finland in New Delhi. Thank you, Jossi, and hello to everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure to bring greetings from Delhi. Uh, from the Embassy of Finland to this event of 3D Bear and Times of India. It's really exciting. Um, I'm very happy always to see when uh, Finnish uh, stakeholders, uh, companies, universities, experts collaborate with India and Indian counterparts. I'm really looking forward to see exciting outcomes of, of this and, and these kind of uh, collaborations. Uh, we are very happy to conduct a pretty active um, dialogue with India, actually, on education. Uh, Prime Ministers uh, Sanna Marin and, and Narendra Modi met last year in, in March. And one of the items that they pronounced and they declared to be a focus area in the future is actually education. And there are many reasons to believe that uh, Finland and India actually form a perfect match in this area. 
there's this extensive uh, reform on education going on in India called National Education Policy 2020. <clears throat> when I first read this document uh, two years ago, I thought that, wow, this is very Finnish document, actually, very ambitious, and many goals that are pronounced there are common to us as well in, in Finland. And I immediately thought that now we are getting closer to each other, to the same page. I would say uh, we share this ambition of uh, more student oriented and activity based uh, uh, learning, gamified um, learning. Uh, and I think that we in Finland, we have quite many things actually to offer in this kind of uh, joint development of education. We have also convinced our own ministry that uh, we need resources to promote the collaboration between our countries. And the ministry is actually distributing quite nice funding of 1 million euro a year to Finnish universities also to collaborate with our Indian uh, counterparts. Uh, we are focusing, uh, when it comes to embassy activities, we are focusing on, on certain domains like early childhood education, teacher professionalism, STEM education, and then digital elements of education. And we are trying to find ways how to bring these uh, solutions and, and this expertise to, to use in India. But of course, education uh, is bound to, to the culture. Uh, it cannot be taken from one, one country as such to another, but there needs to be tailoring in between, we had to learn from each other. And actually, I'm thinking that uh, this kind of interaction is two way road. So we are also learning from India. I appreciate a lot many things that are, are present in Indian culture. It's a long history, uh, wonderful science actually done long, long time already in India, in certain domains, especially uh, we in, in also in science domain, we share a lot of things and common things with, with India. So I think we are pretty good uh, friends and, and a very nice match in, in, in many areas, including education. And I'm really, like I said in the very beginning, I'm very happy to follow this, uh, uh, this collaboration and uh, uh, witness the, the new steps uh, in, in, in this uh, joined uh, joined uh, endeavor between our countries. So I don't take more of your time. I, I, I'm sure that there are going to be very lively discussions today. I'm very sorry I cannot follow tonight uh, all these uh, discussions. I have a little bit uh, uh, hurry now, but I, I'm sure that you are going to have a wonderful uh, seminar tonight. And uh, all the best to you. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mika. We're honored by your opening words in this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you. With that, let's uh, turn to today's theme, uh, corporate and vocational training with immersive uh, technologies. I will uh, open the discussion uh, by describing the market as whole. Um, corporate and vocational training can benefit greatly of virtual and augmented reality technologies. If we look at what is available, at the one end, there's the big boys, the market leaders, Epic Games, which owns Unreal, um, NVIDIA, and their approach is to provide these comprehensive difficult tools like Unreal Game Engine, that other people can use to develop VR, AR environments. Um, if you want to build a, a virtual reality environment using Unreal, somebody first needs to use six months to learn it. And then you learn to do something using that specific technology. Or if you uh, hire a contract work to build a custom environment with this technology, it costs starting from 200,000 euros. So that's where you are when you want to develop something really uh, comprehensive, uh, something with latest technology, with haptics involved. And that's your go-to if you know a very good use case uh, that benefits certainly of using XR that is repeatable and you have tested in many times before 
before you decide to use metaverse technologies for it. So that's in the one end. In the middle of the market, then there are players uh, like Labster who use these technologies, Unity and Unreal, to create uh, ready-made environments uh, that benefit of uh, this uh, technology. So they code with Unity and Unreal and develop experiences that are general enough that you can provide to a large audience. Examples are English training, lab experiments that you can do. Um, all of these uh, aim at providing this ready-made experience to wide enough audience. So that's there in the middle. When you um, continue this imaginary line I've drawn here and go to the left, then we have uh, the platforms where users can create content themselves. Educators, others, they can develop their own content. And that's where we are with the everybody panelists who's here today. We are, we are developers, we are creators who use these do-it-yourself platforms to create our own metaverse content that doesn't need specific skills, doesn't need coding in Unity, and is not ready-made. And this segment is particularly useful for vocational and corporate training. Why? Because usually needs are hyper-local. That means that um, how to teach nursing is very different in India than it's in Finland. How to teach to use a specific machine can be different in Mumbai to Kolkata to Lahti to Oulu. And to use, learn to use a machine, you really need to be somewhere to play and fiddle with the machine. And that's easy in real life, but how do you do it virtually? So that's about the kind of a, uh, market segmentation of metaverse learning technologies that I wanted to kick off with and to understand why we are here today and what is the specific focus of today's discussion. Now, before venturing forth and uh, to the examples, I'd like to just say a couple of words about 3D Bear and where we come from. Uh, so 3D Bear is a, a market leader, a market niche leader in the most accessible and adaptable VR, AR um, environments. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation selected us to be top eight company in the world for XR in education. And if you search, for example, Apple's remote learning collection uh, in App Store, you write remote learning, you'll find our app in the middle of it everywhere in the world. And what we have done as a company is that we have enabled people to build their own metaverse experiences um, using easy to use platforms and a design and service process, which helps organizations to do it. So that's what 3D Bear does. Um, these metaverse learning environments, they provide multiple benefits for corporations. Um, and let's talk a little bit more about them soon. But now I wanna show one example. And this example is in uh, demolition. So let's consider a uh, vocational training in construction industry where sometimes it's difficult to access uh, workplaces, access, for example, a demolition site. So how do you learn it? You don't learn it in Zoom. You don't learn it in Teams. You don't certainly learn it on a Moodle e-learning course. You actually learn the job when you get to do it. And this is what VR environments really provide for vocational and corporate training, in my uh, opinion. So let's look at that specific example of uh, uh, demolition uh, created by uh, Forsa uh, Vocational School here in Finland uh, that enables people to uh, access um, a demolition uh, site uh, remotely and practice um, different um, uh, job skills there. So let me just share this. In this experience, 
the student becomes acquainted with the chances of the circular economy in a genuine demolition site. The simulation begins with an induction where the student becomes acquainted with the demolition and waste management plans and answer related questions. After choosing the right safety equipment, it's time to move to the site. On the way, the safety risks of the site are observed and safe activities are practiced while traveling on the site. Arriving at the subject of the student determines the order in which the demolition steps should be performed and at the same time makes choices related to the circular economy. During the simulation, you will also explore the site machines used in the indoor demolition in the form of videos. Once all the steps of the demolition have been completed, the student receives from the experience of scoring and you can still check out the final report of the demolition destination and you can see the extent to which the materials may have been reused. Finally, you can also explore the pictures and videos of the massive demolition phase of the item. So I think that's a great example, because it provides access to somewhere that's difficult to gain access to normally when trying to learn these job skills, vocational and corporate training. And um, it also touches another very uh, concurrent topic, the circular economy, where you practice the um, construction and demolition waste management in a sustainable way, which is actually a big source of waste at the moment in the world. And if you would learn to recycle the construction waste better, the impacts would be huge globally. So that's, I think, a great uh, VR environment to um, um, uh, regarding regarding its benefits. So uh, with this example, I, I'd like to kick off um, the discussion regarding the benefits of the VR technology. So uh, using virtual reality as training environment. You can, I think the biggest benefit really is that you can learn practical skills remotely, which you couldn't do otherwise. You don't learn them over Zoom, you don't learn over the e-learning platforms. And another is that it's a great preparation for actual real learning. It doesn't replace the real learning. You still need to do the job to learn it, but you can prepare for it. You can, after doing the job, assess, rehearse, and that will increase the learning results. Obviously, some of the benefits of these environments are that they're scalable, as many students can undertake the simulation training in the same goal as you like. Uh, it saves cost because you don't travel, you don't need to uh, have the equipment, you don't need to pay for rents, you don't need to pay instructors, you don't need to pay uh, the costs of getting the workplace. Um, using these technologies is a competitive advantage for all of our customers um, in many different ways. And one uh, important uh, theme that is, was also present in the demolition example, that in these environments you can make mistakes, you can be in a dangerous situation or a rare situation that doesn't happen normally, and you can still practice it with these scenarios. And also um, one thing to bring up regarding the benefits is that you could also speed up time. So if there's something in the work process that takes long, you can accelerate it. You don't need to, because this is a simulation, you can fast forward to the uh, next stage of the process. Picker. So these are some of the benefits of uh, virtual training environments to name some. Okay. I'm. Um, uh, about to end my part, uh, the next we will have a concrete case from uh, Diaconia College. But just before that, I will still describe um, one concrete use case uh, from Jola's book in, in Finland. And uh, uh, so this is a really interesting example um, that I still wanted to bring in this prelude. So Jola's Institute is the center of learning and development within S-Group. 
which is the leading retail incorporated organization in Finland. They are piloting the use of VR technology in their training. They provide training services for 40,000 people working for the S Group. Yolas has explored the use of several different virtual reality solutions for employee training. And recently they harnessed the 3D Bears XR environment co-development process, Wanda VR platform, and Pico headsets to build a training environment for practicing online order pickup. So what they did is that they built an environment in which you receive an online order and you need to collect the items requested. When you're doing the task, you face different problems. What is the right route to take and with which order do you pick up the items? How do you check and ensure the quality of the items collected? What replacement items can you provide for the order? And how do you ensure that the item collection and delivery is done in the s way according to quality standards? These exercises, like the ones that you show in the demolition experience, are gamified. And each choice you make produces different outcomes. And you get feedback from each choice. This way, you can learn doing the task in a real context and get immediate feedback. Moreover, using this environment, all employees can undergo the same training, which ensures the quality. Um, Yolas Group is currently piloting the environment with 100 people, and the results of this pilot will be evaluated by the end of the year. They hope that this training environment will help them in fulfilling their mission to develop competence in order to ensure S Group's competitiveness. So we can tell, talk a little bit about that specific use case later in the panel discussion. But with this prelude, uh, describing a couple of use cases, bringing up the benefits of XR technologies and looking at the market landscape, I will now pass to uh, concrete use cases in different industries, beginning with Diakonia College of Finland. And Laura and Jukka, uh, the floor is yours, and ask, ask if you need, need to do anything. Yes, thank you, Jussi. So hello again, uh, my name is Laura Laakkonen and I work as a digital learning expert in vocational school in Finland. And it means that I work that kind of, I help teachers and students uh, in digital education and learning. Uh, and we are going to tell you a little of our virtual technology in our healthcare school, and Jukka, my colleague, can start. Okay, thank you, Laura. <coughs> Hello, everybody, again. Uh, shall I see a screen? Or... Yes, I think now you can see our, our uh, slides. Mm -hmm. There's something about uh, the benefits, what we have found when we are using VR technologies. Uh, we can include real work environments and, and work situations as, as part of our teaching processing. And, and students can practice unusual, danger, and difficult task in, in a safe safe place, just like Jussi said, said before. And, and they can they can repeat repeat uh, task and training and so many times as as necessary. And uh, VR material supports. Uh, learning of future working life skills. Uh, in Finland, uh, more and more uh, digital, digital tools and, and ways to um, work in, in social healthcare area. <coughs> we are using more and more digital uh, uh, methods. Uh, and of course, uh, it is students has all all time access to our our material 
24 7 and we can practice whenever she or he wants <coughs> and and our material it works all on all devices computers smartphones tablet computer and of course we are classes um, and we can also use uh, elements from games and we think that gamification it it motivates students to learn and, and practice for example we can use different stories and, and problem solving and students collect points it, it motivates students and of course um, teachers can use data uh, for evaluation or, or support, support students if, if she or he needs help. Uh, everything what students do in, in Moodle, our LMS, uh, LMS um, it collect that data. Uh, of course, uh, we can use it in, in distance teaching. It is also possible and, and, and some workplace here in, in Finland use uh, VR technology to introducing a new employer to work task and tools and, and work in environments. And now we have a short film it is a home care visit <laughs> typical uh, work for practical nurse uh, and let's let's see it is only one minute in this simulation the student practices the tasks of a home care worker during a home visit the simulation starts at the home care office, where the student prepares for the visit by checking the client's information on the client list and collecting the required equipment. The student progresses by answering quizzes on what should be done next. One of the student's tasks is to observe their surroundings. Clicking on different objects opens quizzes and answering correctly gives points. In this scene, the task is to choose the picture representing the correct way of measuring blood pressure. Taking care of client's hygiene, an essential part of home care, is addressed in helping the client take a morning shower. Finally, the visit is registered together with the client. After completing the visit, the student evaluates their learning experience and the impact of the simulation. Now I try to change. So Laura and Yuka, you have built this yourself. Yes, and this was our first environment what we made. So it was very uh, exciting, but it was quite easy. And uh, if I remember correctly, you have like um, real place where you train the nurses for these elderly care visits where you usually physically have this like uh, uh, flat where they go to visit like an imaginary patient and you practice this and use this for filming and producing this VR environment where you now can do it remotely anywhere right yes yes you're right okay so uh, in classroom teaching uh, because our environments are genuine places of working life, so we can practice the real situations and real environment, even tough we are in a classroom. Uh, a student says that uh, when you put your real classes in your head, the real, real classroom environment disappears and you can focus only that, for example, home care. 
And um, we can also stream the image of the VR classes to the TV or computer. So uh, other students can follow the learning because um, we don't have um, so many VR classes which uh, our classroom sites is like uh, 36 students in same time. Uh, and also we can go that in our environment also together uh, at the same time uh, with computer or mobile devices or in VR classes. And uh, then uh, Jukka said that this distance teaching is one of our uh, how we use that we are environments and Jukka also said that uh, our Moodle uh, is based our online studies so we embed that environment to Moodle and the students can uh, practice uh, those environments as many times they want and uh, we think that uh, our students uh, can be with us to design and make these new VR environments. And uh, it is very important that they also learn to do these VR environments. And uh, that we... Uh, that every um, environments are uh, photoed in in real our workplaces, not in school or that kind of things. And spectacular. So basically, you create in a way digital twins or digital virtual replicas of real world environments with uh, 360 photography. And then you create these gamified experiences within that helps uh, maybe together even with uh, students and nurses to be. Um, and with them, you can practice this exactly the same skills that would be thought otherwise in uh, different ways in workplaces and in, in vocational school. Yes. Yes. That's great. Um, thank you, um, uh, Laura and Jukka. Uh, let's uh, maybe discuss more um, in the in the panel uh, regarding uh, the fantastic use case uh, you have. Um, and now it's um, time to move on uh, to uh, Valkiakoski uh, Vocational College, Val, and Kirsi Janne. Um, please uh, briefly reintroduce you again. <laughs> and um, then um, I would love to hear your presentation. Uh, regarding the retail product place. Hello, everybody, again. So my name is Kirsi Tyynelä, and I work as a specialist of digital pedagogy at Valkeakoski Vocational College. And I'm also the qualified uh, vocational teacher. I train teachers, and also I maintain and develop our XR environment in Valkeakoski. So I passed first the, uh, to Janne, to my colleague, and um, he will shortly tell about our school. And Janne will also share the presentation. So please, Janne, if you introduce yourself also. There. All right. So, hello again. So, my name is Janne Hietanummi, and currently I work as the development director at Baal Vocational College. I have a long background in vocational education, uh, something like 20 odd years, and um, the past few of them I've been uh, involved with um, all sorts of um, uh, development kinds of tasks, uh, especially digital technologies and, and so forth. So um, a quick word about Wow. So we are not that big. 
something like 1,250 students, um, about 400 qualifications a year. So we are sort of an average size uh, vocational college um, in the range of colleges um, in Finland. We offer very typical areas and currently we've um, deployed um, VR and AR into a um, few of those and um, we plan to go forward um, in the future in that sense as well. So Vao is located uh, at a very small town with lots of um, beautiful nature around. And um, although we are not that big, we, um, we try to be at the forward, forefront of um, utilizing technology in vocational education. And um, next up, um, Kirsi is going to um, demonstrate how we use AR in, um, in, in marketing types of um, topics. So um, I'm just chasing the slides for you again. Yes, thank you. So shortly, first of, about the AR. So augmented reality is a technology that expands uh, our physical world by adding digital information or elements into it. And uh, our exercise we have created is uh, building a showroom or building the product display, for example, the table layout. And in this exercise, we use uh, mobile devices or tablets to add the digital elements into real physical world. And the collection that we have created is a sport showroom. And the theme is winter season sport products. So it's kind of the winter collection. And uh, you can see the few digital elements on the left side. And uh, with this uh, sport showroom exercise, we aim to give the exercises for business and sales students, and then also to visual merchandising students. And this collection that we have created includes the ready-made models, as well as our own 3D scanned models. For example, on this left side, this roller, and this pole is something that we have uh, scanned ourselves and then bring those as a digital objects in the library. And from library, we can then uh, add them into real world with the AR technology. Then the benefits of the AR exercise. So first of all, um, you need to understand the visual merchandising process and practices. So with this exercise, it's not about that you just add certain digital elements into real uh, environment, but you need to understand uh, what kind of practices and processes uh, are used so that, you, for example, the table layouts that you are building uh, the products are there uh, set so that it's motivate the customers to buy the products and also that um, that products are put into certain ways that uh, our teachers are actually uh, actually uh, teaching in this this matter and the benefits are so that um, Maybe the main benefit is that you don't need any physical products or physical base. So it's only that you use that mobile device and you have those digital elements that you are then adding in the environment. Um, I already said that you can use the ready-made products or then if you are building a store with certain products, you can scan those products and then use them in the, in the exercise. You can um, plan uh, product displays advanced virtually. And actually, if, if students would uh, plan this uh, product display, 
he or she could show it for the uh, store manager and say that, okay, this is kind of the layout that you will, you will get. I have planned this for you. So you can add, so the student can in advance show with this uh, AR exercise, what kind of product layout there will be. Uh, then uh, other uh, benefits is that uh, you are able to utilize these new technologies while uh, studying this uh, topic. And then the exercises that you are doing, so they are independent from time and place. So students can do this exercise wherever they are, even if they are at the home. The other one is also the, the uh, mobility. So especially for the young students, uh, they like to use the mobiles in, in studying. So this is again, good rehearsal from that sense. So sometimes it seems that it motivates the students that they can use the mobiles. So it's some, somehow fancy for them to, to use this mobile technology in their education. If you are Janne taking the next slide, thank you. So here is a few pictures. So this picture is, is showing how we have done the D3 scanning for this exercise. So we have selected certain products and, and then formed the digital objects of them. And the next slide, please. So here are the pictures how business students are doing the exercise. There are three pictures, three different uh, students. Other ones are using the mobile, and then the other ones are using the tablet. Tablet is maybe a little bit easier because it's bigger, so it's much more easier to do this rehearsal. But of course, you can still manage also with, uh, with the mobile. And then in the next slide, here are some examples of completed product displays that uh, students are. Uh, two students have made, uh, I was there participating in this lesson. So these layouts, they were doing, let's say maximum two hours. They were first uh, rehearsing the, the application and then doing the uh, layouts. So it was really easy to use. And of, of course, the young students are quite quite good at using the mobile devices. So they learned this very quickly. And then this is the teacher's view. So after the students have made the uh, exercise, they are passing the pictures of the layouts to the teacher and teacher can then view the uh, exercises from his virtual class. And uh, in our case, uh, we were also doing so that uh, after everybody had made the exercise, then teacher was selecting few of the best layouts and they were then discussing what is good in that layout. And they were having this kind of group talk afterwards of this, this layout. And then we have actually there two videos we will see this, this introduction video, which is in English. Jussi will shortly show it. But then in the next slide, there is also the other video. We don't watch this now, but you will get a chance to check this video also. Unfortunately, it's in Finnish, but uh, you will get the idea. There is one of our teachers, Sanna Toijala, who is building this product uh, layout with augmented reality. So, so you will get the chance also to check this video later on. But uh, maybe if we do so that, could you please, Jussi, show the video still? 
Absolutely. Can I ask Thanks. before that? So in this kind of a picture where you had students with the iPads around a room, so and there was this empty space in the middle. So there they were actually designing these product displays in virtual world. So they yes. saw like different items through the iPads. Uh, yes, just like that. Yes. That's amazing. And 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 after the the, the next kind of a slide where you showed different kind of uh, product displays, they were all virtual. So they weren't really in the real world, but they were like through the camera screen, right? Yes, the yes. The phone screen. Yes. Very, very interesting. So let's let's take a look at the uh, video. Um, yes, please. Uh, uh, the same, just the same. In this exercise, the student utilizes augmented reality for practicing retail product placement. First, the teacher creates a classroom for the students on the 3D Bear website and adds students to the class one by one. After getting the task description, the student opens the 3D Bear app and signs in by using their own name and the class ID given by the teacher. The 3D models used in the task can be found in the app by searching for Urheilu esille pano. The task is to do retail product placement in a sports context, which the student can practice by making, for example, symmetrical and asymmetrical compositions. The task can easily be done at home on the student's own desk but the school can also provide facilities for executing a bigger showroom entity. When the student is happy with their result, they can share it with the teacher in the form of a picture or a video. The teacher can then access the student's submissions in the designs section of the 3D Bear website. So uh, in this example, these models, they were custom made uh, uh, to your um, purpose, am I correct? Yes, yes. That's and correct. this is again something that you did yourself. You, you created these 3D collections and made yeah, this, we were, this place. Yes, we were having three teachers and then myself also there supporting the teachers. So it was quite easy when you are just learning the process, how it goes and how those uh, elements are created in the library. I think it's really great to see both in this VR experience by Diakonia College and the AR experience, which you showed that, you know, this is something that can be already done in practice. It's not something that's like out there. It's not like big fluffy metaverse that you know there's big words about and big strategies but nobody does nothing here are concrete examples of how you can already use vr ar technology and you have done it yourself that's uh, i think really uh, hats off to both of your organizations yeah some somebody is always talking about the future technologies but it's not the future it's already here right and with that, uh, let's thank uh, uh, our Valkia Koski College, Kilsi and Janne. Thank and you. next up, we have Rita from uh, Kareria. And Rita, can you again briefly again introduce yourself? You seem to be advancing your career in such a pace that I don't, uh, you know, stay up. That what's your title? <laughs> but maybe you can uh, introduce yourself, and uh, then the word and floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Jussi. Uh, yes, my name is Rita Malmberg and I work here as a project manager at Carreria. And uh, I'll show you my slides. Can you see them? Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and also uh, develop uh, our digitalization strategy. And uh, my background is in the process industry as a uh, such as a nuclear power plant and uh, oil refinery. And I have been there about 17 years. And after that, uh, I came to the education 
uh, sector as a team manager and, uh, and uh, director of education. Well, now I'll introduce you a little bit to Kareria. And we have, we have uh, provided vocational training for working life purposes for over 60 years. And we have, but we have operated under the name Kareria since 2019. Uh, Kareria is preparing tomorrow's top skilled workers for unique future oriented careers menu, which will demand skills in multiple languages and create new roles in international work environments. Uh, this is our strategy. And as you can see, we want to offer working life based course content selection and innovative techniques and training and uh, learning models. Uh, uh, Rita, are ours. Yes, I, I still see the first page, the Carreria Tomorrow's Achievers. Okay, uh, okay. Maybe I take a new share. Now, now I see it. Now I see it. The uh, strategy. Yes. Okay. If I put the. Did it change? Uh, no, I see the page with we create skills and expertise for working life. Okay, I don't know why why it's so, but if you can see it like this, it, it's okay. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yep. Okay. Now it changed. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, here are the main reasons why we wanted to develop VR content for the training of process operators. Uh, I think oil refining is a sector of high level of security and safety. And uh, it is very important to receive continuous training possibilities when working in an oil refinery. In people under the age 18 can uh, train or work at, as a process operator at an oil refinery. And that's the problem. Uh, young, young, young guys cannot practice enough if, if they don't have possibilities to go to work. And Carreria has the uh, pilot factory where you can practice distilling and show your skills to the representatives of working life like Neste and Borealis Polymers. Uh, the problem is that only one student at a time uh, can practice there. And so it was necessary to develop additional practice opportunities. And because the operator's job can involve working under pressure and it requires problem solving skills, we wanted to include game elements to the tasks. And the benefits of uh, VR simulations and uh, how we did we do it. And I think that with VR simulation, you can practice any kind of tasks in a realistic working environment. Even distance students can familiarize themselves with the operations of pilot plant and do the assignments. And uh, students can practice so many times they need to be a skilled uh, operator and get the license. Carrera pilot plant environment was filmed with a 360 camera and a 3D bear helped us to develop the pedagogical manuscript and how to use the Wonder VR platform. And uh, this uh, virtual escape room was uh, for process operator education was developed in cooperation with uh, students and teacher colleagues. And I will show you also this video, I hope. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't start. I can also share it from here, Rita, if that's easier. Okay, if you can share it. Okay, nice. Okay, can you stop you. sharing? So then I can... Yes. Uh, stop sharing. Thanks. So let's look it from here. The simulation. The student gets to practice repair operations in a factory setting. First, the problem is introduced. The tank is empty. In the control room, the student can get better acquainted with the factory through the process automation system on the wall. There are hints embedded in the simulation that can be found by clicking on different objects. Safety at work is also taken into account. 
The door can be opened only after using hand disinfectant and safety glasses must be put on before moving around in the factory. The student's task is to find correct valves and switches in the factory and choose whether they should be on or off. If chosen incorrectly, the student gets information on the operation of the particular valve as well as the whole factory. After finishing the task, the student returns to the control room where the final task is to turn on the pump. The simulation ends where it started, in the tank, which is now filling. And, and Rita, how, how much did it cost for you to construct this pilot facility, the real factory that is there physically in uh, Pareria? The real factory? Mm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was... 20,000 euros. Right. So, yeah. so it's quite expensive and it yeah. requires like physical access uh, to the kind of uh, place um, and these virtual environments. I think it's a great example because now you can practice this. You don't need to be there in Porvo in this facility to practice this oil refinery maintenance operation skills, but anybody can do it from home. Uh, you can do it remotely and you can like I remember when we were building this factory, there was this kind of a, does the factory explode? And I think some of the big company representatives said that, you know, the factory cannot explode. <laughs> and then it didn't of explode course. in the game. But, yeah. you know, there's this gamification that you can learn by doing mistakes and you can break things and you don't need to break the actual, you know, expensive pilot uh, factory and uh, equipment, but you can like make mistakes in a safe environment, coming back to the benefits that we discussed in the beginning. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Rita. Uh, that, that's great. Thank and thank you, you all the panelists. Um, I noticed that we are very short on time, so panel discussion will be short, but let's not that uh, dispirit us. Um, let's uh, uh, focus on the quality and we can maybe go a couple of minutes over time, if that's okay for you. I know it's Friday evening and people want to go to be with their families soon. But at least I'd like to hear from all of the panelists now at the end that what is the what do you think that it's the biggest obstacle at the moment? It's the, what's the most difficult thing in implementing these XR technologies in your organization? And maybe we can start uh, with the first, uh, Laura and Jukka. What, what do you think? What is most challenging in bringing these metaverse technologies to uh, Diakonia College? Uh, it's difficult, but um, I think um, Kirsi just said that uh, it's future, but it's not a future anymore, it's right now. So I imagine that our uh, teachers and students think that uh, we are environments are somewhere in future and uh, motivate to uh, try and learn in wire environments and simulation. Um, that was quite difficult, but now two or three years have made this. Our teacher and students are that we are environments are uh, nowadays, and they talked with other students in other schools and. They ask at that, hey, do you have VR environments? And if the student says that no, oh, really? We have many VR environments and it's quite. And that must affect also your uh, student intake. And uh, perhaps, uh, uh, sorry, maybe I can uh, keep bothering you here. So can you describe a little bit about the kind of a corporate partnerships? I remember that we had this one with uh, Peho Hypu, for example, that they started to use the same training environment in the corporate context. Um, but maybe you could use a word and I'm going to ask the same question from the others. How do you see the kind of a corporate partnerships and going forward? But Laura and Jukka, um, what, what sort of work have you done on that front? Maybe you Laura know that better than I. 
they yeah, piloted yeah. it in the Beho Hyppy, which is the, the local uh, organization for organizing the elderly care in Lahti region. Isn't that so, Laura? Or, uh, yes. And the biggest uh, in Beho Hyppy uh, was the home care when we did the first environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have um, made many environments to um, introducing new employers to home care that they uh, were so excited about that environment. So they took this model and they do that all the time. And there is a, a home care, um, you have some rare things um, uh, which, uh, you can say, yeah, the things that don't happen so usually. Yes, uh, like um, you, in nurse, you go home and you find a dead customer. Person, right. Yes, person. So, so this VR environments help to introduce our new stuff there. The such situation, and I can certainly see the benefits in it because it can be very shocking to a person to get into that situation. And right. how do you act? You need to know, you need to have routines, and that's not something that you can practice easily. But through these simulations, you know, you can. And you can, you know, you've encountered it once or I don't know, even 10 times before actually doing it in real. Yes. Conscious of time, uh, I'm going to ask now Janne and Kirsi the same question. What do you think have been the biggest challenges and what benefit do you see from corporate partnerships in uh, metaverse learning? Maybe in the first uh, part I could answer. So maybe the it's a little bit same that Laura said. So the technologies are so new to teachers that they have maybe difficulties to think what kind of opportunities there are in the education, what kind of rehearsal they could build with these technologies. So it will take some time to introduce these technologies to the teachers and of course show the examples for them that what other uh, college, for example, has done. So they get the examples and then they maybe can invent that, okay, I could maybe do certain rehearsal to my teaching. But that's maybe the biggest obstacle that I see currently. Okay, so about this corporate um, or workplace uh, cooperation. Well, first of all, um, I think, um, I mean, okay, I'll start off with uh, by saying that there has been some interest. I mean, everyone who sees this type of thing um, is very interested in it. And um, not only uh, from the point of view of a pedagogical um, perspective, but, um, but also um, it is something new to a lot of uh, workplaces as to how to be able to um, utilize that type of uh, technology also in their own activities. So. Um, it, it's also a matter of um, cooperation um, in the sense that the workplaces would be getting something out of it, even with the help of the students. So um, it's sort of like a multi-layer um, opportunity basket uh, to go forward with the corporate um, partnership. So, um, but not, not to forget the uh, pedagogical issues of it because the students have um, the chance to um, practice beforehand and uh, it, it's not going to use up any resources or uh, you don't have to buy any 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 uh, objects or anything like this so uh, right that's how I feel if it. I remember right. correctly if I remember correctly you've had some projects where um, corporations you have facilitated like drone filming of 360 environments for example and um, uh, this kind of a similar projects that you just showed here Yes. Yes, that's, that's right. also very exciting. Yeah. So um, I, I think there's a lot of uh, potential in all of these technologies, AR, VR, and, and the rest of it. So um, and drones and and those, of course. I mean, they're a nice addition to to the whole whole mix. Um, 
Yeah, Fantastic. Kirsi. Mm. So uh, maybe Thank Kirsi you. has something to add about this uh, corporate <laughs> topic. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you about it. So. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and Rita, what, what about you? What are the biggest challenges and how, how do you see the benefits of corporate uh, partnerships? Well, the challenges, biggest challenge is to find time time learning new something new and uh, also some sometimes it's hard to find the money <laughs> and uh, the best thing with uh, it's uh, well it's the real we want uh, that our students and uh, everybody knows mm, the real environments working environments that's the best best thing in these virtual things Thank you. So, and what about yeah. the corporate partnerships? What, what do you think about those? Well, they think that uh, they are, mm, uh, the cooperation is the best thing. So we can develop, uh, develop things uh, together. Like in this pilot factory example, yes. you had these yes. big oil companies in Finland yes. as a consortium building the same pilot environment. Yes. I think it's a great example of collaboration. Yeah. The cooperation is the best thing. Okay, thank you all. I think it's soon time to wrap up, but I will uh, finish off with a short description of uh, what 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 have we learned today. And I actually mentioned this that um, what from all of the examples that you've seen and heard, um, these all um, have been built with a specific design process uh, where uh, production of these VR, AR environments, how to do it is crucial. And we can help you. We can help all the listeners of this webinar. I mean, not only me or 3D Bear, but also these uh, colleagues, uh, friends of mine, the Valkiakoski Carreria Diakonia College. We are glad to discuss opportunities together with you of how we can help also you to build your local AR, VR environments for your specific needs, because that's what we do. And this process has been really important to facilitate um, the um, starting of XR development. And as you see, it's part of everyday reality. Um, These um, organizations, they've been using it some for three years, maybe some even more, some less, and have brought it part of everyday uh, corporate and vocational training in their organizations. And to uh, finish off, um, if if you're interested, uh, I'm I'm your point of contact. Please do not hesitate to contact me, and I will bring in all the necessary stakeholders to make sure that your organization also can build your own metaverse learning environments and make them uh, learning of today, not learning of tomorrow. Thank you to all. Thank you, all panelists. And with that, I wish you a great uh, Friday evening and uh, both in Finland and India. Thank you.